So welcome once again to the offices of the World Jewish Congress here at our New York headquarters. My name is Oleg Ivanov. I'm the digital campaign manager and the coordinator of the Jewish Diplomatic Corps here at the World Jewish Congress. So just to reiterate what we talked about before, what we're going to be talking about today is essentially the rise of anti-Semitism on social media over recent years. Now, uh, we just published a report basically going over the, the look of anti-Semitism on social media in 2016. And we're going to be talking about the report, we're going to be looking at facts and figures about the report, looking at some case studies, seeing it, the kind of actions, the kind of laws that are being implemented, actions by civil society groups like ourselves that are being taken to address this issue. But we're also going to, you'll see that this is a relevant issue that clearly didn't end in 2016, that continues to be an issue to this day. So once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, just to reiterate, again, once again, for those who missed it, we'll be taking questions during this webinar, uh, both during my presentation and then we'll have a Q&A section afterwards where uh, I'll be happy to field your questions and to answer them to the best of my ability. So again, thank you for being here. So like I was saying before, just to go over it again, even though the information in our uh, report refers to online, it refers to information that we found, sorry, it refers to information we found in 2016, uh, online anti-Semitism continues to be a major problem. This is something we face every day. Every day, if you go on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, any kind of social media page, you'll find just obscene amounts of anti-Semitic content. Um, every day, this is something that we, that we see and that we fight against here at the World Jewish Congress. We're doing our best, but this is a large task that's really going to take a multi-pronged effort to really address in a meaningful way. So just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, these are just some of the tweets that we saw on Twitter just in the last 48 hours in relation to the terrorist attack at the Ariana Grande concert in Manchester. So just to read some of these tweets, I mean, these are brand new. Zionists just bombed Manchester. Indeed, most terror attacks ordered by Israel anyway. Manchester don't need any more Zionists. Zionists and fascists want more Islamic terror attacks in hopes of sparking civil war. The world should drive out the Zionists. False flag Manchester. Rothschild needs this to make the elections look legitimate. So again, this is just a sample of the toxic, poisonous content that we see online on social media. Now, you see here that many of these are conspiracy theories about Jews, Zionists, Mossad, Israel masterminding the attack, being somehow behind the attack. And that's a major concern. I mean, this is an old, ancient accusation that's been leveled against the Jewish people. But it's not just conspiracy theories. It's also threats and calls for violence against Jewish people generally and specifically. And this is a cause for concern because this is not just an issue that exists online. This is not just something of, well, someone is saying something unpleasant online. These are words, so it goes. These words are both reflections of perspectives, agendas of an anti-Semitic nature. But more than that, they're also a lot of times the beginning of something larger, unfortunately. Um, this can be the first step in a process of radicalization for people, young people in particular, being exposed to this kind of just obscene anti-Semitic hatred. This can be the thing that sparks them and that launches them into a deeper step. So, the World Jewish Congress over the last few years has launched several campaigns directed at social media organizations, national governments, international organizations to crack down on online anti-Semitism and hate speech. 
because anti-Semitism is not something that exists in a vacuum. These things are often coupled with other kinds of cyber hate directed at other minorities, other religious groups, um, attacks on against gender groups, uh, people with various sexual identities. So this is a kind of canary in the cold mine, in a coal mine, as we've seen with other similar situations in the past. Really, this is just a new platform for an ancient kind of hatred. So a lot of the things that have been true historically about anti-Semitism will also be true on social media. But as a part of this broader effort, the World Jewish Congress has set out to, the, to examine the extent with which this content permeates the internet. So the result is our report on the rise of anti-Semitism on social media. Uh, this is a report that we just produced, and it actually forms the basis for this webinar. I'm going to tell you later how you can download it. Uh, you can go to our website and do it, worldjewishcongress.org, but I'll give you more information after about that. So, as I was saying, again, the internet, this is, this is a new tool to disseminate old hates. And the point of this, both this webinar, as well as this report, is to really give Jewish communities around the world a chance to combat cyber hate, to give them a chance to advocate for a more tolerant social media landscape. Because this is not something that just benefits Jewish communities, this really benefits everyone. Because cyber hate is, like I said, something that affects many different kinds of groups, not just Jewish communities. It's something that really, if we're going to fight this poisonous ideology head on, we really need to come together, a variety of different people, to address this issue. So the purpose of this report and the webinar as a promotion for this report is to really serve as a wake-up call to social media companies and encourage them to make the digital world a safer place for all. So let's get into some of the nitty-gritty details and data that we found in our report. First off, as I'm sure many of you know, sitting here watching a webinar on YouTube, the penetration of social media in the Western world, in Western Europe, and the United States is massive. It's more than 80%. Now, not only is the penetration massive, on average, users spend nearly two hours per day on social media sites. That is a huge investment of time and energy, and really, in a lot of ways, internet communication and social media has replaced, in, to some extent, more traditional forms of communication as a way to disseminate information. Now, Based on our research, on all the data that we collated, we found that an alarming 29 million people were exposed to anti-Semitism on social media just in 2016. 29 million people exposed to anti-Semitism on social media just in 2016. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. As we move along, you'll see that that's really just the start of it and that these reflect uh, a very conservative estimate of really the kind of exposure to anti-Jewish hatred and anti-Semitism that people experience on social media. Now, what were some of the key findings of our research? Well, first off, probably the most singular figure is that 30, 382,000 anti-Semitic posts were written on social media in 2016. That's almost 400,000 anti-Semitic posts. That means that there, was, that there were 43 anti-Semitic posts per hour, and one anti-Semitic post every 83 seconds. One anti-Semitic post every 83 seconds. Just about every minute, there's an anti-Semitic post on social media somewhere in the world. Now, when I said earlier that these were conservative figures, I'm going to explain a little bit why that's the case. For one thing, our study, which was meant to be very specific, does not include anti-Semitic content that was removed from these websites 
at any point over the course of 2016. So that means that this does not include posts that were up on social media sites for 11 months of the year, but if they were taken down, this was not included. So again, people could have ex been exposed to these things throughout the course of the year, but if it was removed, we did not include it in our study. So like I said earlier, 29 million, million people is just the most conservative estimate. In reality, the numbers are much larger. But these are just the numbers that we can quantify in an accurate way. Not only does it not include content that was removed, these figures also don't account for anti-Semitic discourse on private peer-to-peer -peer networks, such as Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. So this means that any kind of private group, any kind of closed content on social media, was not included in our study. Again, that's important, because that's going to be a lot of content that's not going to be in this report. So when I say 29 million, again, that's the absolute base. That's really the bottom. In reality, it's a lot more. Now, there's also an another, another important, very important piece of information that we did not include in our study. In 2016, there were 3.3 million, 3.3 million hateful and often violent posts directed against Israel and Israelis and Zionists, often in connection with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but not always. 3.3 million posts. Now, these findings were not included in the present study. I want to emphasize that because we really wanted to concentrate on a very specific definition of anti-Semitism so that our numbers really held up in a scientific kind of way. But that being said, when we say again that 29 million people were exposed to anti-Semitic content in 2016, this does not include all of the anti-Israel content, all the content against Israelis, against Zionists. So if, for example, something said, dirty Zionist Jew, that was not included in our study. If these things had been included, the exposure would be astronomical. It would be, if 29 million people is just the basic content, then I can only guess that this, we'd be talking about hundreds of millions of people being exposed to anti-Semitic content in 2016 on social media. So again, just want to emphasize, because this is important, there were no posts related to anti-Israel content of any sort. Now, let's talk about the methodology a little bit, because this is important. To determine what qualified, what kind of content qualified as anti-Semitic, we relied on a definition used by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. The definition of anti-Semitism, according to IRA, is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews. Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism that are directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property, toward Jewish community institutions and religious facilities. So this was the basis for our study, because again, we really wanted to have a concrete idea of what we meant by anti-Semitism. Now, using this definition from IRA, we then decided to subdivide this larger definition into five subcategories for the purpose of this study. These categories are expression of hatred against Jews. Now, this includes cases where Jews are mentioned in derogatory terms alongside curses or obscenities. Dirty Jew, filthy kike, things of this sort. The second one is calls to harm Jews. Now, these are calls to violence against Jews including direct and indirect threats, like we saw earlier with the Manchester tweets um, telling Jews to leave the country, threats of violence against Jewish communities, Jewish individuals, things of this sort. The third category is the dehumanization of Jews. Now, these are attempts to prove that Judaism does not exist or is an evil religion. 
The fourth is Holocaust denial. Now, these are posts that basically attempt to prove that the Holocaust and events that took place in it were either not real or exaggerated. And this is actually something that is specifically outlawed in many countries. We'll talk about that later. The fifth category is the use of symbols traditionally associated with anti-Semitism. Now, these were gratuitous symbols and phrases traditionally associated with either Nazis or anti-Semitism. Now, these include examples like swastikas, uh, Heil Hitler, and uh, especially when these are used gratuitously um, for any kind of post, either that has an anti-Semitic content or, um, or something like uh, for, for a Facebook profile or an image on a um, Twitter page, something of this, of this sort. So we can go over this in greater detail later if people have questions. Now, just to talk a little bit more about the methodology, to provide a clear picture of the magnitude of online anti-Semitism, the World Jewish Congress commissioned an Israeli company, Vigo Social Intelligence, to gather the data used in this report. So doing qualitative analysis on 2% of the total online discourse, we found that a disturbingly high percentage of anti-Semitic content existed online. I mean, here are just some examples, as you can see. The Jews are behind this, I can feel it. Reality is that the Holocaust never happened. And here we have a YouTube video to the world awakening that Hitler was right. Now again, these are things that at least 29 million people were exposed to in 2016. But as we know, the numbers were actually much higher. Now, let's go into the numbers a little bit more. So like I said earlier, there are five kinds of anti-Semitism. The most prevalent on social media, as you could see here, were expressions of hatred against Jews and use of symbols. So these accounted for about 80% of the total content. This was followed by 8% for calls for violence against Jews, 31,000 calls for violence against Jews in 2016, followed by dehumanization of Jews at 7% and Holocaust denial at 4%. Now, this is very disturbing in its own right, but all of this information. But as you can see here, hashtag gas the Jews, Hal Hitler. Just the prevalence of anti Semitic content is one thing. But then the calls for violence, I mean, again, these are threats to actual people and actual communities. So this is really something we can't take, take lightly. Now, let's look at anti-Semitism by platform. Now, as we see, apparently we have some issues with the microphone, so I'm just checking to make sure. So sorry again for the technical difficulties. This is a, as you know, uh, a live webinar. So for any kind of live situation, all sorts of things can happen. Again, we thank you for your patience and for being here. We're just making sure that you get the best experience you can get. So uh, again, just checking with our staff, just to make sure that everything is up and running, to make sure that you're getting the best experience you can get. We really believe in this study, so we want to make sure that you are getting the information, so we're just making sure that everything is going well. Again, we apologize for any confusion. Thank you again for being here. We appreciate it. We know that you're taking time out of your busy day to be here with us, and we really appreciate that. There's going to be a lot more content at the World Jewish Congress, a lot of things we're going to be talking about. So uh, looks like we can get back to the content now. Looks like we're doing well. So, all right, so getting back to the content. So, uh, like I was saying, anti-Semitism by platform. So, you know, 
even though this is really a problem on all social media platforms, as we can see here, 63% of all anti-Semitic content in 2016 was on Twitter. This was followed by 11% on Facebook, 6% on Instagram, 2% on YouTube. Now, on the one hand, this seems like Twitter is really bearing the brunt of this, and of course it is. But it's also remember, it's important to remember that Instagram is actually the fastest growing social media site, especially among young people. So the kind of exposure that they're exposed to there, this is really going to have an effect for the future. And as far as YouTube goes, again, we know these are videos. So even though it might be just 7,000 posts, these are videos that people are watching over and over and over again, that people are disseminating. So, you know, this is a huge problem, of course, on Twitter, but on all of these social media platforms. Now, like I was saying earlier, it's especially troubling that 8% of all anti-Semitic discourse called for physical violence against Jews. That's 31,000 calls for violence. Now, as we can see here, just like in the general anti-Semitic discourse, the majority of the calls for violence were again on Twitter at 72%. Then we had Facebook at 5%, Instagram at 2%, and YouTube at 2%. Now, again, what is 31,000 physical threats? That's 80 threats per day, one threat every two minutes. One physical call for violence against Jews every two minutes on social media. So the countries with the most online anti-Semitism were the United States, with 68% of all content. This was followed by Germany at 14%, then the UK at 4%, Canada at 2%, France at 1.5%, and there were 30 other countries where we found more than 1,000 posts that fit our definition, our criterion for anti-Semitism. Again, I want to reiterate our very strict criterion for anti-Semitism. So these numbers are staggering, but they're also a bit, a bit misleading. So I think it's important to go into them a little bit deeper. So on the one hand, the United States had five times more anti-Semitic posts than Germany and 17 times more than the UK. These are, of course, terrible, staggering figures. But it should be understood that this is in large part because of the population of the United States, which, of course, is larger than these other countries, much larger. And because of the numbers of Americans on social media, which is actually larger than any other country outside of China. So although there are more total anti-Semitic posts on social media in the US, the proportion of Americans uploading these posts is actually equal to or less than that of other smaller countries. I want to talk briefly about Germany. This is an issue we'll talk about later. So this is the country with the second highest rate of online anti-Semitism, with 55,000 posts in 2016, came out of Germany. Now, this despite the fact that social media usage in Germany is lower than that in the United Kingdom and in France. And that we still see these kind of numbers. Now, unsurprisingly, given, given the data about the US, English is by far the most prevalent language of online anti-Semitism at 82%. This is followed by Spanish, German, French, Russian, Italian, and Swedish. Now, it's important to note that just because, it's in just because it's in English doesn't mean it's coming out of English-speaking countries. Because in many of these countries, particularly in Northern Europe, but also in places like Russia, Spain, a lot of the anti-Semitic content there is actually written in English. So that's something important to keep in mind. So, sorry, once again, just making sure that the sound is working. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Again, we thank you for joining us. This is our first webinar, so we're perfecting this. We're figuring it out as we go. So once again, we apologize for that. But again, thank you for being here. I've got a few more slides here to talk about, and then we'll get into questions, and hopefully we can make this a more interactive experience, because I know that many of you will have questions out there and we'll be able to figure it out as this goes along. So again, thank you for your patience. And uh, you know, again, feel free to write on our chat uh, to ask your questions there, and we'll get to them soon. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session briefly, 
and I know it's going to be an interesting experience. So once again, thank you for being here. We're just double checking on the sound just to make sure that everything is up and running. I mean, it looks like uh, we have a few minor issues, but I'm sure we'll get them resolved. And this is the way that it goes. So, all right, looks like we're back on board. Once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your patience. So, what are some of the actions we can take, given these staggering findings, to fight online anti-Semitism? Now, given the findings, it's clear that both social media companies and government bodies must do more to address the problem of online hate. We need legislative actions and public pressure from organizations like the World Jewish Congress, other civil society groups, which have already prompted efforts to crack down on anti-Semitism on these social media platforms. So, because social media platforms largely rely on users or third parties to flag anti-Semitic content, it's important that we devote lots of resources and energy to educating the public about online hate speech, bullying, and harassment. People must not be allowed to become habituated to online anti-Semitism or become desensitized to it, especially since so much online anti-Semitism is already illegal in the countries where it originates. Now, the report provides examples of measures being taken by governments and social media companies to combat online anti-Semitism, but there's still so much more that needs to be done. So it's our hope that this study will allow governments, civil society groups, and digital platforms to better understand the depth of this phenomenon and to find solutions to the universal problem of online hate. Just to give you a quick case study, this was something that we found on Twitter a few days ago, very virulently anti-Semitic profile. And what you can do, what you yourself, the viewer, can do, is you can actually go on Twitter, click here, then you can report these kinds of findings. And as you can see here, tr Twitter is pretty responsive. So later that day, we found out that this page was taken off. So these social media organizations are willing to help us, but we still need more pressure uh, just to show them what an intense problem this really is. So just to give a specific case study, in Germany, the onus to remove contents is actually on social media companies. Now, Facebook cooperated with the German police and actually provided grants to different entities to combat racism, which actually led to the arrest of dozens of people last year for spreading hate speech online. Now, recent documents have shown that Facebook operates in at least 16 countries with laws against Holocaust denial, but actually only removes but actually only removes content from four of those countries, Germany, Austria, France, and Israel. Now, it seems that this would point to the idea that uh, we, need to, we need more legal in intervention to affect social media companies to lead to significant results. But this is really something we have to do together with social media companies and with civil society groups and also with users. So that is the end of my report. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for being with us. So it would be great if we could field any questions now. Um, while we get those questions up and running, I'll just say very briefly that uh, you can actually download the report at our website, the World Jewish Congress, www.worldjewishcongress.org. This is the front and back cover. And what I talked about today, these were just the major findings, but there's a lot more detail here in the report about specific countries, specific platforms, actions that have been taken by social media companies, by countries, um, and by different organizations to combat the spread of online anti-Semitism. So it actually looks like we are not going to have questions, unfortunately but we will try to field them. We're going to look at them. We're going to field them in the future. So thank you for that, for those of you who submitted questions. Just very briefly, I just want to invite you to join our Digital Ambassador Club, ambclub.wjc.org, where you can join the fight to combat anti-Semitism and the delegitimization of Israel. 
And I invite you to contact me personally, Oleg Ivanov, oivanov at wjcmail.org, here at the Program Department of the World Jewish Congress. So thank you again for your time. I hope it was useful. And we'll see you soon. Thank you so much.